Hey, what's up everybody? On this edition of Roscoe's Reef, we're talking updates and upgrades. So let's start with updates first. We'll start with the right side of the tank and then work, the way, work our way across. The Euphelia Garden is, as usual, uh, doing very well. All the corals are filling out and getting bigger. Uh, the frog spawn, the only thing I have is this one head seems to be affected by something, whether it's flow or um, something else, but I really don't have any worries about this. Uh, it always bounces back and fills out nicely. The hammer coral, again, that's growing and inflating more and more. So the euphelias are basically doing really well. The, out of the two anemones, the darker of the two, um, yesterday retracted all the way into the rock. I thought for sure that I had lost him, but now he's out again. And, um, I'm just feeding them as, as normal and seeing how things play out with them. As far as the Duncans are concerned, the tentacles are coming out more and more. And I am confident that it will bounce back. Today, for the first time, the head right there in the middle came out. So, well, I'm just going to basically leave it there, as I said last week. And hopefully it'll come back to where it was before. The middle of the rock, the corals that I got from Fish of Hex are doing well. The Montipora is growing uh, compared to the pictures I took when it first went in the tank. It has put on some growth. The Setosa coral, while it's really a slow grower as my fox face gets in the way, it is keeping its color getting darker and um, it seems to like its new position in the tank. The green encrusting Monty is doing really well. This section you see right here in the middle, it's not dead tissue. What that is is polyps that have come out and filled in that area. So this is another piece that seems to like its new place in the tank and uh, will do well here. In this section, uh, the acans, I wanted to separate them because when I feed them, I have basically um, cut off pieces of soda bottles that I put over it. So this way they have peace while they're eating instead of getting abused by the fish. So to do that, I had to move the fungia plate over to this side. Now in doing so, I don't think you can see it right now, but this section right here, you could just barely see it. It looks like there's another mouth there at times. Now that's been there for a while and I, it's not, it hasn't split or another frag of, of this is formed, nothing like that. It just keeps that there. So I wanna really pay attention and keep close eye on, on that and how that develops. As far as the Palizoa garden is concerned, it fills out more and more. The other chaos are doing really well and new heads are forming as well as the other three. Uh, they're filling out the rock quite nicely the way I wanted them to. Right now, um, this section right here was irritated by something, whether it be a fish or whatever, and uh, they just retracted, but they'll be out. The zoa is from Fish of Hex. There is a new head that's formed, so I'm pretty confident that it likes where it is and will fill out this rock nicely. This one, on the other hand, the Fire and Ice Zoas are doing well. No new heads have formed, but the other zoos that were on the rock with it, the eagle eyes have melted and disappeared. Now I have looked at other uh, videos within the last week of people that have had the same problem with eagle eyes. Now this is my second group of eagle eyes and, they, and they've all retracted and melted away. So I'm not having luck with eagle eyes at all. The candy canes are both doing well. And when I put the fungia plate over this side, I noticed that a frag of the green digi, of the red digi, I'm sorry, fell into the sand. But it colored up and is producing polyps. So I wanna leave it here just to run a test to see how that does. 
because the ones that are up here, as you can see from last week's video, the dead area of this coral has stayed where it is. It is producing more polyps, especially in the cut area. The one in the back is producing a lot more polyps and starting to spread out. So I may move these to that area because I'm figuring maybe there's a different amount of light or a different par on that section of rock and uh, it'll do better there. The ones that are up on the overflow are doing well. They're getting more polyps and coloring up um, darker each day. The purple digi is getting fantastic growth. Um, the area that on um, last week's update right here, it did lose the polyps, but I am thinking that that's a matter of lighting or flow because the top half is doing well, but the bottom half's not. I think it's getting shielded from flow by the rest of the um, frags that are around there. So I'm just gonna leave it there and see how that develops. The mushroom rock, again, is the mushroom rock. But this is one of the uh, updates that's going to happen. That chalice, the Hollywood Stunner in the back is really getting big. So that's gotta come off there sooner or later. It's not going to be um, growing well, butting up against the return that way. So my intentions are to frag that off and put it on the rock work in the middle of the tank. But I have been talking to some people and it seems like this may be the last video that this mushroom rock is featured in. Um, most of it, if not all of it, uh, will be coming out of the tank. So um, I'll have more on that on next week's update. Not to say that I will be without mushrooms because I have one new one right there. And also there's the ones on the other side of the Euphelia rock. As far as fish are concerned, they're all doing well. Nothing, no problems with them. The mollies are getting bigger and they're coloring up darker now, as you can see as they race across the screen. Uh, so as far as the fresh water mollies in the tank, they're doing real well. Another update is right here. I purchased some Nerite sails from Reef Cleaners and within a day one of them laid eggs and there's all new little snails all over the place now the funny thing about it is these little guys you can see about i'll back out a little bit but right here where they've cleaned off the algae that's on the return and there's a group of them right there so they're doing a, a good job and I'm happy that I have new ones forming that will uh, increase the population of my uh, cleaner force in the tank. So the last upgrade to mention is about this 20 gallon breeder. This 20 gallon breeder will be upgraded to a 40 gallon breeder that I'm picking up this weekend from Billy Pipes. Uh, we're going to be meeting up at Coral Lust to, and I'll be doing a video on his facility and the corals that he has. I believe there's several YouTubers that are gonna be showing up besides that. So if you wanna hang out with us, uh, just get in contact with me or leave a comment with uh, either me or, or Billy and we'll get the information to you. The 40 gallon breeder is about 18 and a quarter inches wide, which is just about the width between these two supports. So to put it in, I'm going to have to figure out a way to shave off material to allow it to fit comfortably between them without losing structural support on my stand. So when that happens, I'll take you through it and how I do it and you'll be included in the whole upgrade. That's about it for down here. Uh, my intention is also to redo my hoses and get that all cleaned up as well as my wiring because once the QT came out uh, I don't like all this mess that's over here so again next week's video uh, we'll, there'll be more about that and I'll take you through the whole process so that's about it for this week's update and uh, until next week this is Scott and I will see you all around the reef tank